Constructing the Built Environment, due 12th of June 2020. This work can be completed by hand or using a computer. Please submit any work you complete, even if you are not sure it's correct. Each slide has an audio option which reads the tasks and gives you helpful hints and tips. Look for the speaker. Task 1. This will take you roughly 30 minutes. Answer the following questions on the next slides. These are practice questions that are based on work you have completed at home in previous weeks, as well as the work you've completed at school. If you are not sure how to answer, look at the work you have completed previously or use other resources such as the internet or your school book, if you have it. Question one, which of the following conventions is also known as a section? So below the question, there are three images. One is titled A, the second is titled B, and the third is titled C. So conventions are something that we covered before half term. And now if you haven't, if you can't remember, if you have forgotten, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Half term was a while ago. A convention is just a technical term that's used to describe an image that helps to represent a building or a project or a plan. And they're technical because they give us a lot of information and they're really, really accurate. So uh, these three images, one of them is known as a section. So you've just got to think back to that work. Maybe you have it somewhere on your computer or in some notes at home, maybe. Reflect back on it and think to yourself, which one of these represents a section? Question two, uh, you need to name the other two conventions that you can see above. So we know that one of these is a section, but what's the name of the other Two. Now, again, if you can't remember, either try and find that work, which is on Show My Homework. Maybe you save the PowerPoint on your uh, phone or your laptop or your computer. Um, or just really just sit and think back to that work that you completed before the half term to remind yourself the names of the other two conventions that are shown above. OK, so question three. Um, this is actually an exam question that I've taken from a past paper. So it's got quite a lot of information there and there's also an image to help you. And it is based on work that we did whilst we were at school in, I believe, term three. So it was after Christmas, um, just before uh, half term in March, I believe. OK, um, so question three. Below is an image of some barrels that have been left outside underneath a vent, which is an inlet to an air conditioning unit. So it just means that it takes air in. There are some concerns that the barrels are leaking chemicals. Suggest what type of effect, physiological, psychological, financial, environmental, um, that this could have on the employees working in the building and the employer. So, these effects, physiological, psychological, financial and environmental, that is something that you would have covered at some point in school. Now, if you can't remember, just start off by maybe defining what these words actually mean. Um, psych physiological, psychological, financial and environmental. You don't need to start Googling. You can if you want. You don't need to write them down, but just break them down. What do you think they mean? And then if some chemicals did leak into the air conditioning unit and it was um, sending all of this nastiness into the air and these employees are breathing them in, what kind of effect would it have on them, do you think? But then also think if they get really quite poorly, maybe, um, what effect would that have on the employer? OK, so this is question four. This is also a, a past exam question that I took from a past paper. Uh, let's read it out. Question four. A woman is walking past a working construction site and takes the following photograph to send to the HSE. What PPE should this worker be wearing? Now, at school, you would have done a lot, and I mean a lot of work on health and safety. Um, by now, you should have that acronym PPE embedded in your brain. So just think about what the PPE is that you wear at school. Think about PPE that you see whilst you're out and about people wearing on construction sites or what they should be wearing. And then just write a little list of what this man should be wearing whilst he is working with that cement mixer. Question six. What is a legislation? Now, this is something you would have covered at school. Let's go on to question seven. Question seven. 
what is a design brief and how is it useful? Now, this was work that was set just before the half term. I believe it was uh, either the week before or the week, week before. I can't remember, but you should have done it fairly recently. So if you're not sure, just think back to the work that was set before the half term. And again, if you have those PowerPoints saved, maybe just have a quick flick through. And then we go on to question eight. This is based on, um, again, health and safety, which we've covered a lot over school. Uh, safety signs can be found anywhere where there is a safety concern. These signs can be found on four different coloured backgrounds, blue, green, red and yellow. Each colour has a different meaning. For example, green means that it is a sign that relates to emergency escapes or first aid. What do the other colours represent? Now, if you're not sure, really think to all of those signs that we've covered whilst we've done construction, but also think about signs that you see whilst you're out and about. Think about what they actually say or the little pictures that are on them and just think about what they actually tell you. Question nine, name the following tools. Uh, I'm not gonna talk much about these because I can't really, what you need to do is you need to think back to all of the practical lessons that we have done whilst in school. Each piece of equipment you have used. So none of this is new. I've not taken things um, out of thin air and just plumped them onto your page. They're all things you have used before. I am gonna give you a little hint though. D and E, they do not have the same name. They are different pieces of equipment. And I'm gonna tell you now, they are known as hand saws, but I want a more technical name, okay? So don't say they're hand saws. I want a more technical name. If you're really not sure, don't forget, there are other resources to help you, such as the internet or your school books, if you have your school books. Okay, so question 10. This is a little bit like uh, Where's Wally? Because below, there is a cartoon of a very active construction site and it's got loads of hazards. All you need to do is find five hazards, and trust me, there's more than five, and then explain what the risk is, so what is the actual hazard, and the effect that it could um, create. So again, we're going back to physiological, psychological, financial, and environmental. So lots of hazards going on. What is the actual hazard that you can see? You just need five of them, and then what effect does it create? So what's physiological, psychological, financial, or environmental effect do you think it is happening? Okay, so to move us on, uh, we're going back to some work that we started before the half term, and that's interpreting technical information. So before the half term, we started looking at design briefs, and any project you work on in or out of school, it will have a design brief as it tells you what you're doing. Uh, and below is a reminder of what a design brief actually includes. So before the half term, we looked at references to the client and we looked at site information. What we're going to look at today, um, we're going to look at uh, spatial requirements. So that's number three on the design brief. And below, uh, there is a summary of what the spatial requirements actually are. So it says spatial requirements, including dimension plans and elevations, including any special circulation or access requirements that could be compromised by any other design features or when the building is furnished or fitted out. Key aspects such as temperature, zoning and phasing considerations are also considered here. So before the next slide comes up, just, just read through that again, if you can, and think to yourself, what does that actually mean? The next slide does actually tell you, okay, so fear not, I do give you the answers, but think to yourself, what do you actually think that means? Okay, so like I said previously, here are the answers. Um, this is also your task too, and I'm expecting it will take roughly five minutes. Might take a little bit longer. If it does, that is absolutely fine. But all I'd like you to do is read the information below, or you can simply listen to this audio. So like I said, I'm going to break this down, and I'm going to explain what this actually means. So I'm not going to read through the spatial requirements again. I'm just going to read through those definitions. So they're all colour coded and we're going to start off with the red one, which is dimension, plans and elevations. Uh, 
So hopefully you've given it a little bit of thought, but this is what it actually means. So these are the conventions that clearly show the size of the project or the home that's being worked on and what it would look like before and after the work is completed. So just think back to the front and side elevation. So you get the front view of a home and the side view of the home and they can be used to actually show you the before and then the after of uh, when the work is completed. So it gives the client a really clear idea as to what is going to happen to their home and what the result is going to be. Uh, moving on to the orange or the slightly yellow. Uh, special circulation or access requirements. OK, so I'm not too sure what you thought this meant, uh, but it actually means how the workers can access the site and where the materials will be stored safely. So um, again, if you think back to the work you did before half term, there was a lot of photos of um, someone's home and they were having an extension bill. And one of your tasks was to do a site survey. And your task was to look at the photos and decide whether there was good access to the home. And, and that is what this means. OK, um, so this is a really part, important part of spatial requirements, because if the workers don't have access, then the work cannot go on. OK, it can't start and it can't necessarily continue. Moving on to the green temperature and zoning. So you may not have given this much thought, but temperature, it actually has a huge part of construction as temperature can affect materials in different ways. It's also important that workers are comfortable in working conditions or else they can't function and get the work done. Um, uh, zoning is a term and it means a uh, separation of land. So it helps to keep the work organized and keeps clear boundaries so the workers know exactly where they're going uh, it can also tell you where materials will be stored, um, clear access, etc. And now we're going to go on to the blue, which is phasing considerations. So a project, it doesn't actually have to be completed in just one go. It can be broken down into stages and these stages should be in a sensible order. So that means that the pace and the progress are constant. In order for us to continue with uh, spatial requirements, we need to understand a little bit more about plans. So this brings us on to task three. Uh, task three is going to take you roughly one hour. It might take you longer. It might take you a little bit less. But what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to read through the following slides and then answer the questions. Now, these are math related questions. If you struggle with maths, if you struggle struggle with numbers like I do, I highly recommend if these resources aren't helpful, do look at BBC Bite Size. Also, look at YouTube as well. Just put in the um, search box what the uh, mathematical equation or, or statement or topic that you, you want to find out about. YouTube is a really, really helpful guide to help you. OK, so like I said previously, this all relates to interpreting technical information. In order to read and understand conventions, you need to know about scale and how to scale numbers up and down. So below is an example of a scaled down drawing. So there's a little rectangle and it gives you the measurements there. And it says 10 millimetres by 15 millimetres. And then next to it, there's an even bigger rectangle and you've got the measurements that are 20 millimetres by 30 millimetres. So this image has been drawn two times bigger and you can see this because the measurements of the new square have been multiplied by two. So if we look at that smaller rectangle first, you can see that 10 millimetres has been times by two, which gives you 20. 15 millimetres, if that's times by two, it gives you 30. Therefore, the bigger rectangle measures at 20 millimetres by 30 millimetres. This means it is two times bigger because it's twice as big as the smaller rectangle. So this is also known as scaling up. So on plans, you'll often see a ratio hidden in the corner, and this is why. So to show how a shape has been changed in size, it can be shown as a ratio, for example, one to two. This ratio tells us that the shape is two times bigger than the original shape. So it's the exact same example as before. The ratio represents that the smaller rectangle, that's 10 by 15 millimetres, and that the bigger rectangle is 20 by 30 millimetres, is two times bigger. That's why it's shown as the ratio one to two. 
So if you wanted to draw this rectangle again, but you wanted to make it three times bigger, all you would need to do is times those original measurements by three. So you'd be timing 10 by three, which gives you 30, 15 by three, which gives you 45. And that means you have a rectangle, which is three times bigger, and the measurements would be 30 millimeters by 45 millimeters. Okay, so now we're going to have a little bit of a practice, and for this practice, I didn't want you just to write the answers. I also wanted to get um, some drawing done, some measurements, and uh, develop those skills a bit further. So I'd like you to look at the shapes below, and I'd like you to draw them up to the scale stated. So if you're not sure, look back at those previous slides we've just gone through. So number one, you see um, a blue rectangle. The measurements are 10 by 12 millimeters. I'd like you to scale it up by five. So the ratio there is one to five. So you need to make it five times bigger. And then if we look at two, we have a triangle this time. You've only got two measurements there. So you only need to worry about those two sides and then just join them up. The two measurements are three millimeters by six millimeters. And I'm asking you to scale it up by seven because the ratio is one to seven. So remember, you need to times those numbers, three and six, by seven to give you the right dimensions that you need to then put on your paper. So when you're drawing these shapes, please don't do a rough hand, guys. Please, please, please. Use a ruler. We are working in millimeters. Now, I know my shapes are not accurate. I'm not going to lie. I did blag that quite a bit. That's clearly a lot bigger than three and six millimeters. But the whole point of it is to help you practice those, that skill of using a ruler and actually measuring and marking out in millimetres. OK, so we're still talking about interpreting technical information. Floor plans are really accurate pieces of information because they are drawn to scale. It is important that these floor plans are accurate and represent the correct shapes and sizes so that suitable plans for the home could be made. So to make these scale drawings, each room is measured and then every measurement is divided by the same number. And this is called scaling down. So a ratio can also be used to show how much a plan has been scaled down by. So this ratio shows 1 to 14. That means that this plan uh, has been drawn 14 times smaller. To work out the original size, it's very similar to um, scaling up. 
but instead of multiplying the numbers, you're going to divide the measurements by the second ratio number. So if you look below, there is an example and it shows a square that has been drawn to a scale of 1 to 8. This means that the square is 8 times bigger than the original. So to work it out, what we need to do is we need to divide those measurements by 8. And we know we need to divide them by 8 because the ratio says 1 to 8. So if we take 48 millimetres and we divide a bit by 8, that gives us 6 millimetres. If we take 32 millimetres and we divide it by 8, that gives us 4 millimetres. And then below that, you can see the original size um, of the original drawing. And I tried to get this one a little bit more accurate for you, so you can see that it is 8 times smaller. Okay, so now we are going to have a bit of a practice. So you don't need to draw anything. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to work out the original measurements of the shapes below. They have all been scaled up. So you need to use the ratios to find the original measurements. Okay, so what you're doing is you're scaling them down. So let's look at number three. Number three gives us the ratio of one to twelve. So what we need to do is we need to take the measurements, A, which is 48, and we need to divide 48 by 12. That gives us the original size. We then do the, the same to B, which is 60. Take 60 millimetres, divide it by 12. That gives you the original size. Now, I'm not going to give you those answers because you've got to do that bit. But that's what you need to do for the remaining shapes. So if we move on to 4, it says 1 to 4. So you need to divide the numbers 64 and 76, which is labelled A and B, you need to divide those by 4. If we move on to 5, you can see the numbers are getting a bit bigger here. Uh, the ratio is 1 to 18. So you need to take the measurements that have been labelled with A and B, you need to take 18 and divide it by 18, and then 54 and divide that by 18 to get your original measurements. Do you see where I'm going with this? I'm not going to explain 6 to you, I want you to just look at it, and work it out and then just give it a go. Constructing the built environment, due 12th of June 2020. This work can be completed by hand or using a computer. Please submit any work you complete, even if you are not sure it's correct. Each slide has an audio option which reads the tasks and gives you helpful hints and tips. Look for the speaker.